We all remember sitting in class, chewing our pencils, doodling, or secretly reading under our desk while our teachers mindlessly read from a textbook. If you were like me, you felt cheated and vastly unsatisfied with your class discussion on the Big Bang. The current scientific materialist paradigm provides the following answer for the origin of existence. There was nothing, then bang, existence. But how did it bang? What was the source of the bang? Through what mechanism does the bang happen? If there was nothing, how can there suddenly be something? What preceded the Big Bang? So many questions. A scientist's disappointing answer is it just happened. You know, by random accident, literal magic. Can you spot the obvious logical fallacy here? This is honestly no different than saying God did it. It is disgusting that as adolescents, we were starved of the methods used to determine the answers to immensely important questions, such as the origin of all matter. Stephen Hawking has said that since events before the Big Bang have no observational consequences, one might as well cut them out of the theory and say that time began at the Big Bang. Events before the Big Bang are simply not defined because there is no way one could measure what happened at them. See how easily scientists can dismiss the entirety of our origin because it is beyond the observable? This is the exact materialist dogma that is spread in schools. Listen closely because this can be an indescribably difficult concept to grasp. Before the Big Bang, there wasn't nothingness. Instead, there existed the illusion of nothingness as perfect mathematical symmetry. I'll explain the mathematical symmetry in relation to perceived nothingness later in the video. So please stick around for that. And if you haven't, click the like button, subscribe and click that bell icon because it's going to get good folks. When we think of zero, we often equate it with nothingness, emptiness and non-existence. This is one of the many flawed aspects of our current scientific materialist paradigm. Scientism currently treats zero like any other number on the Cartesian number line located between one and negative one. Well, zero is actually the sum of one and negative one, and actually any number and it's negative. Thus, zero reflects a mathematical operation, addition, or subtraction. So in this respect, zero is composed of other numbers for which an operation has been carried out and does not represent the number itself. The God equation by Mike Hockney states zero and infinity belong to another category altogether, completely apart from finite dimensional numbers. It is stated that they belong to the dimensionless realm of singularity, a realm of mental frequencies. So let's talk about this. Your mind is a monad. You are a mind, meaning you are a monad. You are not a body. But <laughs> what is a monad and what do you mean by mind? Let's talk about that. A monad in ontological mathematics is a single autonomous frequency pattern or a mathematical set. Each soul or monad is a complete and consistent set of sinusoids. That's that frequency information that I discussed. A large majority of the sinusoids within a monad remain in phase, meaning a sine and matching cosine wave remain perfectly orthogonal to each other along the axes. These perfectly orthogonal waves are your mind and the collection of all perfectly 
in phase sinusoids of all minds equals the source singularity. It is when all monads share thoughts that the low energy band portion becomes out of phase, creating the physical world of matter, i.e. the realm of shared thoughts, this dimensional world. The space-time holos, this physical world of matter, is a mathematical Fourier projection of the source singularity. Each monad mind itself is a source singularity. The space-time holos is a projection of that space. In other words, you existed before the Big Bang for an instant as a thought. And it was thought, this frequency information or energy contained within the mathematical sets known as mind or monad, okay, that existed before the Big Bang. Thought before the Big Bang was mathematically symmetrical and completely unprojected, i.e. dimensionless. The source where minds, monads, contain frequency information or thoughts is non-local, while physical reality is local. In physics, locality is defined by physical objects that are influenced or put into motion, animated, etc. by its immediate surroundings. Non-locality allows physical objects, phenomena, to be influenced at a distance, and, and logically, this distance could include other domains, such as the frequency domain of mind, pure frequency information, i.e. energy, monads. Non-locality is a part of reality. Wake up, it is not the stone ages. Quantum mechanics has stated that the communication at the quantum level involves non-locality. In fact, that all quantum communication involves non-locality. Guys, there is something beyond the physical domain of matter influencing the matter within this domain outside of it. We in the Hyperion knowledge system, call it the monad. You can call it your soul, your, your mind. In ontological mathematics, these terms are synonymous. The monad is a container of pure thought or frequency information without a subjective aspect or individuality before the Big Bang. Like I explained earlier, without the mental projection of thoughts, we have perceived nothingness or symmetry within uh, and no uh, physical world. The difference between the perceived nothingness before the Big Bang and the current world of physical matter, the holographic-esque frequency projection world, or the holos, after the Big Bang is sinusoidal symmetry versus sinusoidal asymmetry. Sinusoidal symmetry is pure thought, sine and so cosine together in phase, orthogonal and symmetrical, no projection. And asymmetry is fractured thought, sine and cosine or out of phase, resulting in a thought projection. The point before the Big Bang was a point in which all monads, single dimensionless points, existed together as a single point. We call this the omega point. We can define this point mathematically by using the Dirac delta function. This was introduced by theoretical physicist Paul Dirac. The Dirac delta function assigns a value of zero to the function at all points other than one, at which it has an infinite value. It is defined as having an integral of one. We can interpret this at the cosmic scale as meaning that it contains all existence. This is the monadic singularity, as written in the God Equation by Mike Hockney. Truly, the physical domain of matter was born of a multiplicity of phase shifts or sinusoidal wave relation events. All minds began projecting thought at once. The interference of these thoughts created physical reality. So a clear way to understand what went down would be to call it how it is, an instance of an infinitely large multiplicity of phase shifts or sinusoidal wave relation events. But 
Who wants to say all that? Big Bang sounds cooler, right? It's just that Big Bang is vague, unclear, and ill-defined, as well as it carries a lot of misconception with it. For example, technically there was no bang. Before it, we all existed, but as a single non-dimensional unit. All thoughts were symmetrical, resulting in the perceived nothingness. But remember, just because you, you can't see it, taste it, touch it, hear it, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. The French philosopher René Descartes in his Discourse on Method in 1637 coined the phrase dubito ergo cogito ergo sum. Latin translated to English as I doubt, therefore, I think, therefore, I am. And what is a thought? Non-local mathematical frequency information or energy. Thought existed before the Big Bang. I think, therefore, I am. And I always was. And I always will be. I am an eternal monadic mind.